Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. We're going to do another quick tip tonight on Orca Slicer. We're going to specifically talk about ironing. Um, ironing has been around forever. Um, it, I mean, even if it's like one of its early iterations, like in Cura, way back, it feels like 100 years ago when Cura came out with ironing. But everybody's got their version of ironing. Prusa Slicer and Slick Thoriar and uh, Idea Maker, S3D, they've all got an ironing feature in there. But if you haven't been printing for a long time, like some of us, and you're new to it, this is what ironing does and is and all that good stuff. So ironing is essentially, if you think about like a machining operation, but you're using the the, uh, the nozzle to essentially do a little bit of scraping on that topmost layer of your of your print. And it is blending in some of the, 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 the filament lines at the top, <clears throat> and you're achieving a slightly different surface finish um, uh, using the ironing method. So things will come out a little bit more matte finish than they are glossy. Um, and you definitely want to tweak and tune some of these settings before you just go ham and, and run this on something. Um, you also want to make sure you've got a very key um, feature turned on if you're running this. And I'll tell you what that is in just a second. So I've added, just for testing purposes here, a little primitive, right? So right click, add primitive, and I've done a cube. And I've just shrunk this cube down to something like two millimeters tall for, for testing purposes. Um, on your quality tab, if you run down here to the middle, ironing is set up and it is no ironing by default. So it's turned off by default. So you can select all of your top surfaces to iron, your topmost surface only, which is the one I typically use and what we'll use for this, or all of your solid layers. So if on your strength tab, you have set up, like you can see here, I've got four top layers and eight bottom layers and you select all layers in your ironing selection over here, it's gonna iron all of them. Now, keep in mind, I'm gonna to say topmost here, but it's running at 15 millimeters a second. So that's pretty slow. You're gonna turn, you're gonna turn uh, this print into something very long, so just keep that in mind. So I focus typically on the topmost surface only. I have found little benefit to ironing all of those top surfaces in the past. So I typically just focus on the topmost surface. You can then select the ironing pattern. So rectilinear, back and forth, or concentric. Uh, ironing speed. Again, this happens typically pretty slow. You are using the heat of the nozzle uh, and the nozzle itself to essentially scrape, just mildly scrape. You're essentially sanding that top layer of your print to achieve a slightly different surface finish. While you're doing that, your ironing flow is pretty important. Um, so 15, so you so essentially your your flow rate for your filament is going to be tuned all the way down to 15% flow rate instead of 100 or whatever, right? So a little bit of filament is going to be coming out and melted while it's performing the ironing function here. And your ironing line spacing, right? This is essentially your step over. So if you think about a CNC router. If it's coming down in, the, in your surfacing, uh, you're surfacing a piece of wood or a piece of aluminum. And then, so this is your step over. So your line spacing is your tool step over. So um, I've got this set at 0.1. To me, the tighter this is, the smaller number this is, the better surface finish you're going to have from a smoothness perspective. Now, you can go crazy if you want, of course. No reason to go crazy. If you're using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, I would recommend keeping this to half of the nozzle diameter or a little less. So 0.2 or less, I of course run a 0.6. So I'll run 0.3 step over or something less. In this particular case, I ran a 0.1 step over and it did come out pretty smooth. It does blend in those lines quite a bit. And I'll show you a picture here in a second. So with that, all you have to really do is slice the plate, right? And then we can take a gander at what's happening. You can see here on the legend, ironing is selected. It is this top salmon color. If you deselect it, that's pretty much what your normal print would look like, right, when you're done. Uh, with ironing turned on, you can see if we zoom way in, it's pretty tight, but it is doing those passes with the nozzle, jumping over point one, doing another one. Um, and, that's, and that's essentially it. And you think, great, let me just go off and do it. And then you run your print, and then you think, oh, crap, here's my result. So here's... Here's what you would, you know, the normal print with no ironing turned on. It's glossy. Uh, you see the lines, totally typical thing. Here is the more matte finish. It has been sanded a bit more. And if I really zoom in, really get in tight and zoom in, um, all of these other little layer, you know, these little print lines are essentially smoothed out and gone. Um, but you can see this guy. That is a travel line because I did not turn on Z-Hop. So 
I spent all this additional time at 15 millimeters a second running across this part, forgot to turn on Z-Hop. So when it was done to go run off and do my next print, it actually, the nozzle scraped right across the part. So that's probably the key thing here is once you've set up your ironing uh, tool path, you wanna make sure Z-Hop is turned on in this case. So here's how you do that if you don't remember. You don't actually need to go back and change anything up here in your printer settings if you don't want to. You can simply go uh, pick your, um, your edit presets here next to your filament. You can come here to your settings override. And then you can right here, Z-Hop when retracting, if you tick that, specify some sort of distance, right? So in this case, I'm popping up 0.4 millimeters. I want type. I'm going to leave it as normal. I don't just pop straight up and move over. You have a couple of options there. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then you can say on certain surfaces, I'm going to say top only. So had I done that, I would not have that big scar line running across my part. So keep that in mind uh, if you're going to run off and do this. So the only thing then I would say is if you're going to do some, t so make sure you save this, of course, sorry, save that. Save it as a new copy or save over what you had, whatever you want to do. Make sure that's saved. And then run it and then run a test, right? Run a test with this. And if you're going to do some, some settings tweak, okay, play with your ironing speed a bit, play with your flow rate. Um, these two things I would say are probably, um, all three of these things are probably pretty good to go test. Um, be careful about reducing your flow rate too much. If you have zero flow happening, um, you are bound to get a clog at some point. If you've got a lot of ironing happening and this is a big part, you're bound to get a clog, I promise. So keep this somewhere around like a 10%, 15%, maybe 20. Um, I think 20 is even overkill. But, but anyway, those are the things you really want to keep out for. You can tweak this line spacing, right, as far as the, the nozzle step over distance. I think those, these, these bottom three things are completely fine to go play with and tweak. And if you keep this a small uh, test piece, then you can, you can run these off pretty quick, right? I think we did this in, yeah, less than 10 minutes, right? So 10 minutes a piece, you get a really darn good idea of what, what your machine is capable of with those certain ironing uh, settings turned on. So there you go. Uh, I hope this helps. Like and subscribe, please. Uh, drop a comment. I'm sorry it took a little bit of time uh, to drop another video, but we have some more coming up. Um, we're going to be branching out a little bit here too, to, uh, I've got a new tool in the shop and some new software. And, um, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll, you'll all like it, catch on and maybe you already have one as well. So anyway, um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. It is December 25th right now, if depending on when you're watching this. So, uh, I hope you're all well and really appreciate you, uh, subscribing and watching and just taking the time. Have a great one. Talk to y'all soon. Bye.